Hi everyone. Welcome to Practice Problem Stock 03. In this one, I'm going to test you on your knowledge of accounting for treasury stock. So here it is. On April 20th, Flyer Court issued 200,000 shares of $2 par value common stock for $8 per share. On November 12th, Flyer Court repurchased 35,000 shares at an average market price of $5 per share. And on the following March 30th, Flyer Core reissued the 35,000 shares for $250,000. So, record the journal entries for Flyer Core's original issuance, repurchase, and then reissuance of this common stock. Take a moment, see if you can do it on your own. When you're ready, come on back. I'll walk you through the solution. All right, welcome back. So, starting at the top, April 20th. On this day, we are issuing 200,000 shares of $2 par value common stock, and specifically we're issuing it for $8 per share. So we are receiving cash, 200,000 shares, $8 per share, works out to $1.6 million. So that is 200,000 shares times $8 per share. Now, we cannot attribute all of that to the common stock itself because the common stock only has a $2 par value. So we are going to credit common stock, in this case, for only $400,000. That is the 200,000 shares times $2 per share, that's the par value, and then we are going to credit additional paid in capital common stock for the other 12 or 1.2 million, and that is simply the excess of cash received over par or 1.6 million cash minus the 400,000 par attribution gives us 1.2 million to additional paid in capital. So this is not actually dealing with treasury stock yet. This is simply the original common stock issuance and appropriately distributing that cash between what is the par value and what is the additional paid in capital. However, now we're going to proceed to March. Uh, nope, not March. Sorry. We're going to proceed to November 12th. And on November 12th, we are repurchasing 35,000 shares for an average market price of $5 per share. So on the 12th, we are the ones spending cash. And specifically, we are spending $5 per share times $35,000 shares. I'll pull up my calculator for this one. 35,000 times five, that works out to $175,000. And that entire 175,000 is going to be attributed to now what we are going to relabel as treasury stock. It doesn't matter that we're buying what was the common stock of the company. Now that that stock is held within the company, within the treasury, that is called treasury stock, and it is treated as a separate valuation from the original common stock. Now that takes us to March 30th. On March 30th, we reissue all 35,000 shares for a grand total of $250,000 cash. So March 30, we are getting cash again, this time $250,000. You can see the appeal of a treasury stock transaction here. Notice we only paid 175 and now we're getting back 250. So on stock that we already received cash for issuing one time, we are now receiving even more cash by issuing it a second time. That's the appeal of treasury stock. Um, we're getting cash of 250. Just like an original stock issuance, we have to attribute that cash between par and excess of par. And in this case, the par is the par of the treasury stock that we are reselling to the market. And even though that is common stock that had a $2 original par value, remember, once you enter into a treasury stock situation, you have reset the par price. So basically, this $5 per share that we paid to get that stock, that is its new par value for all intents and purposes. And therefore, 
That is what we attribute to now taking out of treasury stock. We're selling it all. So $35,000 times $5 per share, that's what comes out of the treasury stock. 35,000 shares times five per share. That's how this 175 came to be, and that's how both of these 175s came to be. And now the excess money we've received on top of the reissuance of this stock, or in this case, another $75,000, that is going to be additional paid in capital, specifically associated with treasury stock. That was just the 250 cash received minus the 175 attributed to the par of the treasury stock. And that's it. One thing I do want to just highlight real quick is look at this journal entry and look at this journal entry. They're both stock issuances. The only difference is in the first one, you're issuing common stock for the first time. In the second time, in the second instance, you're issuing the stock for the second time. Like you, you rebought it and now you're reissuing it. But there is a key differentiator here. In both situations, you receive cash. In both situations, you've got additional paid in capital that increases your equity. The biggest difference here is when you issue common stock, you're literally increasing the equity of your company because you are making common stock that is outstanding go up. When you reissue treasury stock, you're also making the equity of your company go up, but not because you're putting new stock into the market. It's because you are eliminating the contra equity account that you created when you first pulled the stock back into the company. So this right here created a negative effect on equity, and this right here undoes that negative effect on equity, okay? Small technical differences, but ultimately they kind of had the same outcome. All right, that's it for this practice problem on accounting for treasury stock. I hope you found this helpful, and I hope you join me for another video.